One book gave me the technical information and confidence to make a major electrical repair underway. No cruising boat should be without it. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I share the book that every cruiser should be on a first-name basis with. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by YouGoWare. Yugo is the only waterproof, floating phone case using dry suit zipper technology. Invest in your safety, because if you don't protect, you can't connect. Your phone is fully functional, and there's plenty of room for your keys, cash, and cards. To get the only dry bag on the market with zero phone fails, visit yugoware.com. That's U-G-O-W-E-A-R. Dot com and use promo code BG20 for 20% off your order. You go. Prepare for adventure. Okay, let's talk about the best boat mechanics book. Officially, the name is Boat Owner's Mechanical and Electrical Manual, How to Maintain, Repair, and Improve Your Boat's Essential Systems by Nigel Calder. Wow, that is a mouthful. And so pretty much everyone just refers to it as Nigel or Calder. Literally, I don't think I've ever heard anyone refer to it by the full title or even mechanical and electrical manual. In fact, if you called it that, I'm not sure anyone would know what book you were talking about. Now, Nigel Calder has written at least seven other books for cruisers. But whenever anyone just says, have you checked Nigel? Or sometimes, what does Calder say? This is the one they're talking about. We had the second edition aboard KTAL and used it extensively in troubleshooting various problems. We loved it and recommended it to many others. Now he's up to the fourth edition, and it's even better. This is one of those books that almost every boat needs to have aboard, but I have to admit, that I'm having a hard time figuring out just what to say about it. It covers the entire electrical system, including various battery types and a variety of charging options. Marine electronics, including saving soaked equipment, diesel engines, transmissions, shafts and props, refrigeration and air conditioning, plumbing, including tanks, heads, and the associated through hauls, pumps and water makers, steering, wind vanes, and autopilots, stoves, heaters, and water heaters, winches, windlasses, and bow thrusters, and standing rigging and roller reefing. Whew. And when I say it covers, I mean it covers in detail, and not just in words, but with lots of diagrams, photos, troubleshooting charts, and more. One thing that I really like is that Calder doesn't use photos or drawings from just one manufacturer, which might not be yours. For example, in the diesel engine section on fuel pumps, he has drawings from Detroit Diesel, Caterpillar, and Volvo. In another section, he had pictures from both Yanmar and Perkins. Over and over, we found that even if he doesn't show our exact model of something, he has one that's close enough for us to use to be able to follow what he's talking about. Dave and I are both pretty mechanical and willing to work on various projects. We found Calder to be a great reference, but we also know a number of cruisers who don't consider themselves mechanically inclined, yet have found themselves needing to make repairs in out-of-the-way locations. And they, too, have found Calder to be invaluable in giving them the confidence to first diagnose the problem and then to fix it. And that may be the best part of owning this book. You can do a lot more than you think you can. For example, early in our cruising, it became apparent that something was haywire with the battery charging. This was a topic that neither Dave nor I felt remotely competent in. But it was clear that one of us was going to have to deal with and so one afternoon, while Dave sailed the boat, I sat below with everything torn apart, reading Calder until I found symptoms that sounded like ours. 
I did the tests he described, and concluding that our voltage regulator was bad. Now, to be honest, I'd never heard of a voltage regulator before we'd bought the boat, and only heard about it then as we inventoried the spares. Of course, our spare wasn't identical to the one in use, so it wasn't going to be a simple swap out. Nope, I had to install a whole new wiring harness and everything. But, and this is huge, after reading Calder, I understood what I needed to do. Between his book and the installation instructions that came with the regulator, I had no problems other than those occasioned by working on a moving boat. I even understood what I was doing in programming the regulator correctly for our batteries, as opposed to just a cookbook approach of, do this because I say so. My confidence soared with that one episode, and I imagine others have had the same experience. I can't tell you how many times we've pulled out Nigel to figure something out. More than one page is covered in grease stains. The bottom line is that I highly recommend this book, whatever you want to call it. Amazon pretty consistently has the best price, so that's where I link to in the show notes. Now, if you buy it elsewhere, make sure to get the fourth edition. It has a lot more information on some systems than the second or third edition. It's available in both hardcover and for Kindle and other electronic formats. I greatly prefer a hard copy of reference materials as I find it easier to flip through the pages to find what I want, and it's also much easier to follow many of the tables and troubleshooting charts. That's it for this episode, and thanks for listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. Make sure to subscribe in your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you tell your friends, we'd be thrilled. 